Check this shit out. When we were kids, we all had our dream jobs planned out. I myself wanted to be a paleontologist because, you know, dinosaurs rule, but my buddy Will was dead set on becoming an astronaut. He was a kid who was digging a hole in his basement to reach China, or was stringing up used electronics wires around the treehouse to build a time machine, and no matter what you said, you couldn't convince him any of these schemes wouldn't work. The astronaut path got amped up even more when his parents got him a copy of Space Shuttle Project for the NES. For a long time, he was really focused on playing it, which he insisted was part of his training, and so, of course, no, I couldn't play it. Well, it's 30 years later, and now it's finally James's turn to shoot for the skies. So what is Space Shuttle Project? Well, it's a surprisingly detailed simulation game that runs through the various steps involved with launching a shuttle into space, performing some kind of repair or scientific operation, and then of course bringing the shuttle back down to Earth. The various obstacles preventing you from entering the shuttle or launching a satellite are obviously embellished a bit in order to make this an actual game, but the rest of it seems to be a pretty legit representation of what happens with this kind of space mission. I mean, I say that, but I missed out on all the training when I was 9 years old, so what do I know? The expedition takes place in four stages, although there's actually a minigame on the Enter Your Name screen. What? After you choose your title, you then need to memorize a four-digit number and shuttle name that then you need to plug in slot style. It's actually harder than it looks, and is easily the most difficult sign-up screen on the NES. It immediately made me think of Millhouse playing Bone Storm. After that, you'll reach the first real stage. There's an elevator that brings you up to the shuttle where you'll need to activate various levers and then load up your buddies one by one. This part is pretty blatantly cheap as it's timed and they barely give you enough seconds to get everyone on board. If you can't throw them in there quickly enough, you have to start all over again. This is actually really tough on even the first flight and by the fourth, you'll be cursing every god as you slam into these capsule things or somehow just miss being at the right height to leave the elevator. The Ascent and Descent are similar in gameplay which is basically a series of mini games that make the shuttle rotate or break or whatever. Some are as simple as just stop the cursor in the area like a game of golf while others require you to track along the computer's triangle or hop through a gap back and forth. A lot of these tasks? I don't know. On your first or even third try, you may still be saying, wait, what? What was that? Or it'll seem pretty straightforward where you'll swear you're performing the action correctly only to repeatedly fail. Like this one, Gimbal. Before it moves, ask yourself, what's going to happen and what buttons will I need to press? Well, the answer is press A when it reaches the right and B when it reaches the left until it stops moving between the two. When I explain it that way, it sounds pretty simple, but with zero context, even when I anticipated what was going to happen, it took me three tries to choose the correct input combination. The main variation in gameplay is the hilariously named extravehicular activities section. It's mostly this incredibly tedious space station construction stage where you transport squares around space using asteroids physics. Once you place a square, you have to float all the way back to the shuttle, grab another piece, and then awkwardly make your way all the way back across the screen. It takes forever, and as the game goes on, these levels get longer and harder and longer and longer. Oh god. There's also some vertical sections where you guide a satellite to rescue a stranded cosmonaut, which are thankfully not as time consuming, but still not super fun. Although, hey, Gorbachev thinks you personally? All right. Speaking of world leaders, after the sixth mission, you'll return to Earth where you'll be greeted by President George Bush and, whoa, former Vice President Dan Quayle? That rules, the potato man himself. Now I'm thinking I need to make a video of every time an American president makes an appearance in an NES game, but so far all I can think of are this and bad dudes. Hmm, let me know if you guys can think of some. So yeah, Space Shuttle Project is pretty terrible. Some of the challenges are insanely difficult, requiring perfect timing or control of what I can only describe as a pretty drifty interface. The mini game activities are complete trial and error, and it'll take you multiple playthroughs of each level to understand what's required, and even then you may still mess it up. Worst of all, the extravehicular activities are so slow and awkward, eating up 15 minutes apiece with mind-numbing, frustrating inaction. The positives? Well, it appears fairly accurate as far as a simulation goes, and the little details with the shuttle's movements are not something you see in a lot of NES titles. Aside from the construction stages, the rest of the game is pretty tense, 
creating a constant state of anxiety about finishing on time or accurately inputting whatever's required, which in turn makes things pretty exciting. Also, the music is perfect, changing seamlessly between frantic pulse-pounding soundtrack to a calmer, more pensive orbital theme. Overall, yeah, I wouldn't recommend Space Shuttle Project in any way, but it is unique enough to warrant at least one playthrough just to experience how different it is from other 8-bit titles at the time. And if you're like me and are taking the time to delve into every game in the library, believe me, uniqueness goes a long way after your fifth golf game or 30th generic movie license title. Hey y'all, if you like my channel and want to see more, I'm posting a bonus video every week over at patreon.com slash words, and then I'm also streaming every Thursday at 9pm Eastern Time, so come hang out. Thanks for watching.